Mm. Thank you very much for you. Uh, thank you very much for your very kind invitation to have this opportunity to give this talk. And uh, uh, it's my great honor to give this talk, uh, how to write a paper for publication with the HPE. Good uh, evening, good morning, and good afternoon to everyone. And we have now we have around uh, 160 participants. And I wish this can be helpful for our young uh, scholars and uh, students, uh, can be helpful. And this, I would like to acknowledge uh, Professor B. Emery and uh, Antonio Plata. This was originally from them. And I just give this talk uh, uh, for this, for, for, for them and for this society, okay, for the GISS society. And uh, uh, you may know uh, I'm the, the newly elected editor in chief of HP Gestas. So this, I also would like to share my. Uh, share my um, experience with you you guys now i'm going to cut my video just to keep the connection uh, better okay so uh if, so first of all i'm going i'm going to introduce a little bit of the statistics of just us and then right now as you know we are fully uh, open access uh, this year, full ac open access, and we have the, these are the statistics. We have around 36 days from the submission to the first decision. I think it's quite, uh, at this, it's quite uh, good now with this number. And the final decision is 54 days, okay? And the other thing is, now we have a um, flight uh, auto publication cost is about $1,250. For each paper, and this is compared with the past. The past we charge uh, we charge two hundred dollar per page, and the average number of pages to of just us is twelve point five pages. So the cost in the past was averagely was thirty hundred. For this aspect, it is cheaper now. Okay, but of course for some other also. It is, uh, it, is, uh, it is slightly a bit more expensive, but I think it is, um, uh, it is a relatively acceptable number of cost. And we have a lot of special issues running now. We have a lot of special issues for different topics. And you, all of you are welcome to propose special issues. If you have, if you have an idea or any proposal, please Please just simply send it to me, and we will uh, send the proposal to a uh, evaluation to our evaluation committee, uh, we, and then to process it as fast as possible, and then to run the special issue. Okay. Okay. Now it's going to be the outline of the talk. First, uh, I'm, we are going to talk a little bit about, uh, we are mainly focused on uh, how to write your paper and the public uh, publication ethics and the editorial process. Then give some summary and then in the end of the talk, we can have some uh, questions and, uh, uh, and a welcome during the presentation, okay? So the first thing is, I think most of us are students because it's run by the student chapter, the Beijing student chapter. So I, I expect, we expect that most uh, um, audience are students. So the first question is why does one publish? Actually, it's not only for students, it is also for young scholars. And in the beginning of our career, we also have the same situation that we needed to publish. So why does one publish? The first thing we want to publish is, of course, we want to share our discoveries and the knowledge with other people, with the other scholars, the experts in our society. This is the first thing or the first uh, uh, origin, uh, origin in our mind, that is we want to share something we discovered. After, if we share something that is with novelty and the contribution, of course, we can gain pre prestige and recognition. Everyone would like to get prestige and recognition, right? So this is also an idea. And uh, one of the most effective and important ways to publish with the publication, and is one of the best way to get prestige and recognition. And of course, for students, uh, 
in the in the world, let's say in the world, no matter in China or outside of China. When we want to have a degree or a program, we have some requirements. One of these is for sure is publication, right? Yeah. And of course, uh, for young professionals, it is when we uh, during our promotion and we need to, uh, for our career, we also need a publication. So public, basically, publication is very important. Everyone know that, knows that publication is very important. And we want to publish is from all different kinds of aspects. So we want to share our idea. We want to be famous, to have some recognition. And we want to have a good career, to have the degree, right? So public publication is important. And then apart from that, we have a secondary benefit. What is it? Okay, when we write papers, or when we know that, when we write papers, write it promotes better understanding. That sometimes, for example, when I tell with my students, my students, sometimes they come to me, they say, ah, professor, I have an idea. Then I say, okay, come with me with something uh, in hard writing. You write it, and uh, for example, with a report or with something. Because when you write, it can uh, help you to understand something, under the idea, want to, work, uh, to understand the idea, to understand what you are thinking, uh, uh, what you would like to do better. My, uh, this is one of the most effective way, okay? And also can help help someone with the logic organization and also to for the clar clarification of our idea or concept. This is a very important way. Sometimes like when we are reading. Reading help us uh, to understand other people and writing help us to understand ourselves. And also, of course, writing also help other people to understand us, okay? And the other idea is, the other important aspect is writing help us to have or to, uh, to inspire new ideas, not only for authors, also for readers, for other people. Writing is one of the most important way of communication, okay? Of course, when we sometimes we go conference, we go co uh, workshop and uh, uh, workshop and to have group meeting to communicate with other people. Apart from that, uh, these are these are, these things are very important. Okay, this is a very important communication. Very important uh, in in on site or on real right uh, on site or online. Okay, yeah. but the other another very important part of communication is writing. When we publish, when we read the papers. Uh, it's like read books. We can understand people better and we can make people to understand us, okay? So that's why we want to publish. Why we want to publish, why we need to publish, okay? This is, as far as we know this, that, okay, we need to publish, right? As a researcher, as a research, as a, uh, as a scientist, as an entire scientist, and as a student, we need to publish. So. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the guidelines for writing a technical paper. Uh, uh, we are researchers who need to write, te write a technical paper, right? And the first thing is why and where to publish and who are the audience. Then based on this, we can choose a pick a journal. Which journal we should to submit? Should we submit to transaction geoscience and remote sensing or just us or GISL? Right? What, uh, which journal to choose? And then what's the paper structure and the component to ethics? These are very important. Then after that, we can write the paper and have it approved and submit the instruction to the authors. do when we write the paper. So, the first thing is publish. Where and uh, where should we uh, and, uh, to publish, right? So first we publish with the HP journal or with the HP conference. We both, in general, we publish in both, right? The author's original research, right? This is, of course, we have difference between journals and the conferences. And uh, 
Now, in some, as we just mentioned in the very beginning, for example, for degree of a promotion, maybe we prefer if the uh, journal papers, journal articles are preferred uh, other than conference articles, right? This is also uh, the case, but we need to publish both journal articles and the conference papers and depend on what are the findings, okay? Normally, a journal article is a fully developed presentation. It's like something like we have uh, some final findings. For example, it should have some significant novelty, right? It should have complete exploration, thorough and complete exploration, and it should have clear conclusions supported by uh, adequate data experiments or proofs. And it can be either a later or a full paper, depending on publication speed. For, and now I think the speed in both, uh, no, not only both, or TGAS, uh, GSTAS, and the GIS AIR, and uh, Geoscience and Remote Sensing Letters, or the, our, and uh, include the magazine, or our GISS journals are very fast. They are very fast, okay? So, uh, the, up to, up to the, the, the idea and the name, which depends on the scope. If, if the scope fit, uh, fit in DGAS, we can submit it to DGAS. And it's more, if it is more like an overview, we can submit it to magazine. And it is like a us observation and application uh, to us observation and remote sensing, of, uh, we can submit it to GSTAS. And if it's a short later, we can submit it to the GIS. Okay, no matter which one, it is a full paper. Okay, it is a full paper. It is like a some the final finding, and which is quite different from a conference article. For example, for a conference uh, for a conference paper for the conference like Agas, which is the biggest, is the flagship conference in our society. In, the, uh, in our society is Agas. Normally, we have four pages. Okay, it is four pages. So. That is much short, okay? So a four-page paper is more like a report on ongoing research. It's something like ongoing research we want to share with the community. Uh, then, okay, okay, we can like to have a short uh, report, a small paper, like four pages. We can submit it to, we can submit it to uh, Agas, or we can submit it to uh, Whispers, uh, this kind of conference. It is uh, some preliminary, uh, pre uh, pre preliminary results uh, or some highlights of recent work is just uh, some uh, uh, just some basic or some first step of the result, and the, we can uh, it is just uh, some some establish some pre precedence of uh, our idea, and also with this we can when we join a workshop or a conference, I guess we present our this ideas, then we can get some informal feedback to be used in our research, then to make the idea more uh, thoughtful and complete, then to build the final paper is a journal paper. So this is the, the relationship or the connection between conference article and the journal article, okay? In general, or in conclusion, we can conduct that the conference articles are typically shorter than journal articles with less detail and a few references. Because normally, for example, in conference, sending me emails, ask me, I say, they say, okay, can I? Send a um, paper which is extension of uh, a conference paper. I said, oh, For example, it's 10 pages or 12 pages, double column, think space to a journal. Okay. And the conference paper is just four pages. From this viewpoint, there are for sure more than 30% differences. There are more than 
that's why you can see that you can be over okay so after that we have a summary of the journal paper a journal paper where we have a a journal paper is preferred by promotion or degree and also a journal paper we can uh, often as such it three times more than a uh, more than uh, a conference paper or uh, other cases, okay? And the conference paper, of course, can be quickly uh, recognized and uh, see by the society, uh, recognized by the society. And of course, a journal paper normally take, um, take some long time than conference paper and have a higher percentage of possibility to be rejected. Right now for just us, the rejection rate ratio in this uh, in the last 12 months is about the 60%. And normally it's between the acceptance ratio is between 30 to 40%. And the, reje the rejection rate, that means uh, once uh, two thirds of the papers are rejected, of course, it is the, the ratio is higher. And for conference paper, uh, for conference paper, uh, it is the acceptance ratio is much higher, of course, but it's just for our society. Okay, I know that for for some other society, for example, computer vision, and this is a different story. Okay. Okay, and also after that, we need to find what is the right uh, journal or the right conference for us to submit. There are one, more than one hundred fifty-one unique publications covering a worldwide range of technical areas for HP. And with the increase of open access journals, we are going to have even more, I think. And for the conference, it is even more, more than 1,000, the leading edge conference proceedings every year. So we, where should we submit or we, which journal or which conference should we choose? Now, first we should do is review the journalists. Who is going to read it? What they publish, what kind of articles, what they want, who is on the editorial board, who is, what is their edit, uh, editorial record, what is the impact factor? For example, I have some feedback from me from the editing side, and sometimes newspaper, and then you got direct reject from the EIC. What one of the things I check, of course, it is fully, uh, they are not, they are outside, out of the scope, right? Then also, so of course, sometimes also they don't know why I'm outside of the scope. There is an easy thing to check. So if you check the references and if all the references are from a different society, it's not from the geoscience and the remote sensing society. And if the references are nothing related with the remote sensing, of course, it's definitely is clearly outside, out of scope, okay? And of course, when you check the editorial board and there is nobody, nobody doing similar topics, nobody are doing the same topic, and that means no one is able to handle your paper. It's also likely this paper is, is not easy to be managed or is out of scope, okay? So the idea is if you, if you, if you would like to check if the paper fit the journal or not, the thing is to check the recent, the publications in the recent years, the paper published in recent years, if they're similar direction published, or they have similar keywords, they have uh, similar topics, okay, that means the paper fit, likely fit the journal. And if it's nothing related, in pub, nothing published in this journal, and likely, it is very difficult, okay? So this is the idea. That means if if there is nothing like the journal or The other things, of course, are important. Important, right? Is the impact factor. Is 
maybe sometimes, okay, I have um, TIGAS, uh, GIS and magazine has a higher impact factor. Maybe I should have submitted to, uh, to uh, magazine and, uh, and uh, TIGAS, the impact factor good. I can also submit to DGAS. But this, I would like to recommend is, impact factor is important, but it should not be the first uh, concern. The first concern definitely is the scope, okay? It's the scope. If your paper fit the scope of the journal, if the paper does not fit the scope, even the journal is very bad, it's impossible to publish. It's impossible to, pub to publish in the journal. If the paper fit the scope, then you may submit it to very good journals, okay? Now, as I just, we just say, it is very important to consider who are the audience, uh, who is going to read, who is going to read the paper. If you are going to publish, who is going to read? And of course, we are going to think first who are going to write the scientific papers. Ah, uh, okay. So the first thing is, uh, who solve, for example, who solve a new and important problem in their field? In the scope, okay, in the scope, under the scope of the journal, and there is an important and a new problem. If it's solved, and that means it is not, it has contribution and novelty, okay. And in their field is in the scope. So of course, this kind of paper is very is very uh, likely to be published and is very uh, uh, preferred or favored by journals, okay? And then who are the ones, of course, who are the ones, engineers, scientists, educators and the researchers from, today I think we have audience from academia, corporations and the government, institute, okay? Government is like most uh, related with the institute. So, and in general, students and the professors typically write and present a conference paper before submitting journal paper, because we would like to share our preliminary results and idea with our community, and we, uh, we also like very much to publish uh, conference papers. Then we just then we need to think. We just say, okay, what? And the editors and the reviewers are looking for, right? Because when we send a paper and we we don't want the IC, the editor in chief to have a direct reject, also don't want the a associate editor to have a direct reject. So we need to think what they're looking for. Uh, of, uh, the first idea is original content that is appropriate in scope and level, uh, for their journal, this is the most important thing. I just, uh, as I just mentioned, if it is outside of the scope, it's impossible. If there's no AE, no editor can manage the, the, the idea, it's, it's very difficult. Maybe the editor needed to take forever to find the reviewers for the paper, it is also very bad for the paper, right? It, it is also very bad of, for the paper. So it is the most important thing in the scope and it should be original content, okay? Now in the system, in the manuscript center system, we have a cross-check uh, option, the cross-check. If it's overlapping more than 30%, uh, more than the editor-in-chief directly receives an email that saying that, okay, this manuscript, has more than 30% of uh, overlapping with other other papers. And then uh, we can go, we normally we go to have a detailed check. If the paper do have uh, too much overlapping with the other manuscripts, then we reject it to the return it to the authors, ask them to revise. Otherwise, I say, okay, it is done something, something, although they have similar sentence, but it's not important, then we move to the uh, move to the uh, next round, next round, okay? The most important idea here it is, should it be original, okay? This is very important. Sometimes, sometimes authors ask, okay, I just have an improved version of an algorithm. So basically the literature review are very similar, the, the re related work are very similar. Can I submit? How can I have 70%? 
how can I have 70% of the uh, differences of the manuscript? Okay, For, uh, if in this is the case, I think also is needed to think very much a lot about if it is really original or not. Okay, the very important to have an original. And uh, after that, it is, of course, it needed to clearly written and uh, original material that address a new and important problem. And we have original idea then to solve a problem, right? If the idea is new and it, it is useless, it cannot solve any problem. And it, of course it is also cannot be published. It's new and it can solve a problem. Ah, and then well written. Well written, uh, uh, that's why I today have this talk because sometimes authors are not really so careful. Actually provide a template what uh, Mac, uh, Mac, uh, Microsoft Word and uh, Matex both kind of template, but basically what we need it is do, um, a double column, single space, and the actually left style. But from time to time we receive uh, manuscripts and with 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 uh, with uh, messy, very messy. Uh, uh, version, and then we have to retain it to the author because this is the format. Is the the format? It is uh, uh, very. Uh, it is very easy and it should be carefully considered. Okay, and the other another is the valid data and the method can be valid validated. At this moment in in GIS in our society, we have a code library. And also, are also recommended to submit the code to the code library. And actually, the code library, if you if you want to submit a code, it also have a DOI. Unique DOI is also considered as a publication. And then, is the conclusion should make sense? Okay, the conclusion should be consistent with the idea and the problem and the methodology. That's, that's, that's what makes sense. Sometimes the conclusions are completely uh, isolated from the previous, the other parts of the, the Maastricht. This is also, um, uh, this also should be very careful. And then another, uh, another thing is illustration tables and graphs should be able to support the text, to support the idea and the methodology with a clear, clearly demonstration, with a clear demonstration. And in our society, we have many groups that can make very good or very beautiful tables and glass. But in general, our society is not as good as the biochemical or biologic society. Their figures are much, much better, okay? Anyway, good, good uh, clear illustration can help the reviewers and the editors to understand the, the manuscript better, much better. Finally, it's references. They should be uh, current and uh, re relevant to the subject. As I, I have, in, in just as have received, has received some manuscript and the most recent journal is in 2015, okay? Some of the most recent uh, uh, journeys in 2015. This is this should not be the case, okay? This should not be the case because because it should be in our society. I suppose in our society, every topic are improving and advancing. So there are some uh, one way or another way. There are some things should uh, re re relevant, or there are some topics. Uh, should be relevant to your research, to our research. So the references should be very, should be current. Okay, so we have, we just discussed about why, uh, what the editors want and the reviewers want and what reject. We just mentioned that we have 70% of manuscripts are rejected around. 70% to 60% to 70% rejections, 70% rejections. Uh, why we reject, why they are rejected? The first 
is the first issue is, is not good, a good fit for the publication. The content is out of scope, okay? And uh, plagiarism. Plagiarism, I just mentioned that. We have a tour, cross-check tour, if it's more than 30%, and sometimes we receive manuscript with more than 50% of, uh, with 50% uh, of this, uh, with more than 50% of the uh, uh, overlapping with the other manuscript. And the, then the other, it is the serious scientific flaws, for example, the inclusion results or incorrect interpret, imp, interpretations, fraudulent research. And another issue is poorly written. This is this is one of the uh, uh, very pity issue if the paper is poorly written. It's, if there's, it is a good paper, but it is impossible to understand, it is, it is a very sad, okay? Although in HP there is a policy that uh, uh, there is, it is not allowed to reject the manuscript because of the English, because of the writing, but if the manuscript is impossible to understand, the editors and the reviewers has no way other than reject, okay? So at least you need to make it understandable. Uh, when I talk with my students, when I talk with my uh, students, I always tell them, for technical purpose, the easiest or the simplest way is to have to make sure Some of the reference, uh, the manuscript have references, the latest ones, 2015, or even earlier, may work from 10 years ago or 15 years ago. And uh, it has an issue that people may think it is not such a new. Okay. So these are the means for objection. And uh, there are just this kind of reasons, not so many, but we should, as we know that we have 60 to 70 percent of rejection. The ratio is not so low, and that means we have after we can think the normally in the actual structure paper structure we have title abstract keywords introduction data and the method and the result conclusion, acknowledgement, references. And this is the basic structure, okay? And the basic elements of the manuscript. And then we are going to and if you look at the template, if we look at the template of an actual journal, and we can see the, this kind of uh, this element of the first one is the title. Uh, what is an efficient or effective title? Effective title okay? To attention. 
question here we give uh, two example the first one is a by the title the first one is involving in a certain application basically it's an empty title okay as we can see there is always empty we cannot see anything and we have the is color back codes for mobile applications a per channel framework it the job uh, it job the application this has a certain barcodes also it has uh, the 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 novelty or the contribution the novel contribution is a per channel framework so basically in the title we should be enough so what we want to do uh, what is what we want to do what is the novelty Ah, right. What are the contribution? The time should be enough to address all these issues. And if we can use a few words to address all these three aspects, that would be perfect. Okay. That's so. Basically, it's use keywords. Uh, it's crisp, concise, over the jargon and acronyms. It is. Uh, don't use uh, acronyms, okay? And it's use use keywords, use keywords as concise as possible. This is the title. Titles are very important because when sometimes most likely in most cases, when we take a quick look at the manuscript, uh, what can uh, uh, grab our attention? Mostly is the title, okay? We pay, we give a quick look at the title, okay? The title is. Interesting. Then we can, we likely we go, uh, for, uh, we go follow the work next. Otherwise, we if we think the title is boring, then we simply drop the manuscript. So in the end, the title is the most important part of the manuscript. And then is the abstract. The abstract is a standard um, along uh, condensed version of the article. It should cover. Uh, what can cover significance of the paper, the, the work, the novelty, the methodology, and the findings and the conclusions. And it, of course, we have uh, keywords and the indexes, right? And in the actual abstract, now uh, it's a typical is 150 to 250 words abstract. Sometimes we write a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but it is about one third, one third uh, of one column. So it is about one sixth, sixth page, okay? Uh, it's about this length, about 250, this length. It is, impo we, it is important to, to, to point out that for most readers, this will determine if they read the rest of your article or not. If, Normally we take a quick look at the, 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 the title and okay, it's interesting. Then we, uh, we take a quick, then we read the, 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 the abstract. If that abstract is interesting, okay, then we go on. Otherwise, no more. Then several decisions in the peer review process depend on title and abstract. This is also the case because our reviewers needed to be interested to, to continue. Sometimes when I was a reviewer, when I was a reviewer, sometimes I have an article and I say, okay, I'm going to re review this article. Then I cannot go again. Then I cannot go again because sometimes the articles are so boring. Okay. Because when we read that the abstract is quite boring that it cannot, um, cannot make people to read it, to finish the paper. So this is very, very important. And the, the abstract can be written first and then rewritten when the paper is done. And there is a guideline. In the early phase of writing, the author should plan to spend half as much time on writing, reviewing, and editing abstract as one on the rest of the manuscript. 
as I, I, I mentioned to my student, I told them, okay, if you write a manuscript, uh, the manuscript writing takes four weeks, then the abstract is two weeks, okay? That means the abstract is very, very important. And it is, is basically uh, the uh, short version or a condensed version of the article, and it has the full structure of the paper, okay? Here we give a simple example, a single example. From here is not from our society, okay? But we can see here. Basically, from here we can see what you did. In the abstract, we need to ask these four questions. What you did, how the results move the field uh, forward, right? This is the contribution. Ah, and it's the royalty. And how you did it is the methodology, right? And the main result is the proof. Okay, I needed the, the result to prove. And where they apply and how, and that means it is useful. Basically, if it is condensed enough, the abstract can only need four sentences. Okay, five. If this considered two, only the five sentences. It is a very condensed. Uh, uh, condensed uh, abstract. If it is not that condensed, uh, it doesn't. It is also okay. But at least it should be clear enough to state what you did, what we do, and uh, uh, what is the, the what is what is it, and how how is it is the novelty, the contribution, the novelty, and the methodology and the results. Basically, everything should be in the paper, it's in here, in the abstract. <laughs> then it's the keywords. Keywords, sometimes we write it very quickly. Maybe in a few minutes we write it. I would think it is not important, but this is, this is, this is wrong, okay? Actually, uh, keywords are very important. It is because it, it uh, applies when, when we in the searching system, it can't be searched. If your our paper is going to be searched uh, and to be seen, to be read by other people, mostly depend on the keywords. Okay, so that means it's important. Maybe if we have a very good paper, but then we sometimes we complain, ah, oh, why we I have such a good paper, but no people read my paper and nobody search my paper. Maybe the problem is because of the keywords. They're not good enough. They're not. Um, uh, they're not searchable. Okay. So be very careful. Be very careful with the keywords. The keywords. Uh, they should be uh, searchable. Uh, they should be for enhanced search engine op optimization. Okay. For example, they should be logic, appropriate, applicable, specific. And the most important is searchable. And, and uh, recommendation is check the ones, the papers, and the good ones, and the ones in your field, uh, in the in your field, the good papers in your field, and then related with the topic to see what are the good, uh, the good uh, keywords, and then make your own keywords. Okay. After the abstract, uh, the title, abstract keyword is the introduction. Introduction is one of the most difficult part. It's somehow as difficult as the abstract. The abstract is a condensed version of the paper, and the introduction is an enhanced abstract. Okay, it's an enhanced abstract. It uh, in general is up, up applies. Uh, Move step by step throw. That we should move step step by flow, uh, throw. General know information about the topic. Prior studies, histo historic context to your research. Your hypothesis and an overview of the result. How the article is recognized. And then uh, normally the introduction should be not should not be too broad or too vague. Uh, should be not more than two pages. It is an aggregation of this connected summary of past work. 
The last one is very important, okay? We should connect, have a connect summary of past works. It's not, it is not just, um, uh, it is, it's not just an, an aggregation of past work, okay? They needed to connect, to link the past works and then move to our research, okay? Because it is a description of the problem that we have researched, including a literature review that motivates the additional work. So we need a motivation. The introduction is the motivation. We need to make it clearly the motivation and make clearly the contribution. Okay, for a so recommendation is, I just say, if we write a paper in four weeks, two weeks we need to write the abstract. Then one week we write the introduction. Then the final week is the remaining of the other parts of the paper. For example, the data and the methodology. For the data methodology, uh, we need to, uh, to make clear the problem for the formulation, the data and the process used to solve the problem, prove or dis disprove the hypothesis. And it's very important, a uh, good idea to have uh, figures, tables, graphs to support, support, support the conclusion. I think this part everyone knows, right? Uh, a recommendation here it is in the introduction. In the last section, we point out, we motivate the research work. That means we address the problem. What are the problem? We point out the problem. What are the problem we are going to solve? And then in the methodology, we, 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 uh, we address or present, propose a methodology to solve the problem. Because the problem was pointed out or motivated in the introduction, right? Then in the, in the methodology is to solve the problem. And then in the result and the discussion, what are the purpose of the results and the discussion? The purpose of, of the results and the discussion is to, to prove that our methodology can solve the problem. Then it is a consistent article. Our article is consistent. We have the problem in the introduction. We have the methodology to solve the problem. We propose a methodology to solve the problem in the method, in the method uh, part. Then in the result and the discussion, we address that. Okay, we prove that uh, our method do and does able to solve the problem. Okay, so that's the result. So when we design experiments, when we uh, design our experiments, describe our experiments. What's the purpose of experiments? The purpose of experiment is to uh, describe that our method can solve our problem. So it is just, it's not only about accuracy, or it is not only about mm, the, the, the maps or these things, okay? It's about how, when we design experiments, how our method solve the problem. How our, it is the purpose is to an, analysis the, our method. So this is very important. In this way, uh, when, we, uh, we did, when we demonstrate that, we can solve the problem or make significant advance in understanding the process, the process be investigated, then our experimental design is unique. It is not like, it's not a, the, the introduction, methodology, and the experiment, they are consistent and connected to each other. And they're not, they're, they're not isolated, disconnected parts. They can be, for example, they can be dis, um, disconnected and assigned to any paper. No, they're not like that. They should solve the problem. They should understand the process be investigated. So in the end, they are joint, uh, the joint, uh, they are consistent, they are connected. And then the summarize of the results, when we summarize the results, they should be clear and concise, of course. 
What is clear? Clearly, the message like, okay, our method do solve the problem. To illustrate the findings. And then when we have a discussion, and uh, when we interpret the result, of course, when we interpret, we say the results prove that we can solve the problem, right? In the discussion, what we are going to do? In the discussion, we are saying, okay, why our method can solve the problem? If we can prevent the uh, analysis, why analysis, why our method can solve the problem? Why our research can offer a new result? This then in the front, uh, after, if we can include this part, then the paper should be very strong and very interesting. Okay, and of course we should also acknowledge if we have sometimes we have limitations in accuracy or resolution, and we can also highlight potential connections with earlier work that may be improved after learning about our result. Finally, is the conclusions. The conclusion is also very difficult to write. Right, sometimes people consider it as a repeat of the abstract, but it is not. We should not do a repeat of the abstract and the, to do a make a repeat uh, of the abstract is, uh, is one of the, very, the worst we can do, okay? Then actually when we do a conclusion is not, it, it's quite uh, simple and easy. We just explain what the research has achieved and what is new about, that's it in the conclusion because we just needed to discuss what are, what are the work and what we have obtained, and why is this? And it is related to the introduction, related to the abstract, but it's, the, it's not a repeta, uh, repetition, it's not a repetition. It should include a summary of the main findings, important conclusion, the uh, implication for the field. And also we can um, point out or mention the benefits and the shortcomings the solution presented and the, the research and the methodology, okay? And also sometimes we can include some feature areas for research. This is an example of conclusion. I'm not going to give detail, but we should, the one thing we should be very careful is, uh, it is not a repeat of the abstract and not a repeat of the uh, introduction. Okay, now I'm going to, Talk about references. This is the, when we write a manuscript, we generally think it is, it, it, this is part, is one of the part, John um, little or uh, the uh, little attention from us. We just, normally we pay very uh, little attention to references, but this is one of the place with the most of problem. Okay? Yeah, actually the references has a template. We have a reference style, but we always, always have a problem. And also for myself, okay? That means it's quite, it's not easy, it's, uh, it is difficult. So first, we should follow the reference style. If it's actually, we should not, not use SV or MDBI, okay? And if we use, for example, if we use abbreviation, then we, if we use the full name of the references, then in the whole of my, uh, uh, references, we should use the same style. We should use the same style. Actually, it has its style, and we just need to check the very carefully what are journal article, what are conference papers. It, it, it is not that difficult, but we ha always have a lot of problems, almost in every manuscript, okay? So for our students and the young professionals, is recommended to be very careful with references, okay? Uh, for, for example, for my student, in the final version of the manuscript, in the beginning, I have to check everything. Before submit, the final thing I check is okay, I check references. And I say, okay, I only allow you to submit if there's no problem with the references. And if, for this, normally take some time. Sometimes take even one week for them to make sure that there's no problem with references. 
uh, apart from that, we should, uh, as an EIC, I would like to recommend uh, you guys that on, list only those references quoted, uh, quoted in the paper. Don't, don't refer, include any references because for, uh, for favor or for personal reason, okay? There is no limit to the number of references. Sometimes some papers can have 30, 20, 30, 40, 50 references, it depends. But the thing is the references can support our work. This is very important. If we can do a comprehensive literature review in the introduction, it is expected that we are going to have more references, right? So we don't need to have a limit for a number of references, especially now, just us has a flight uh, a cost, right? Also um, cost, the paper cost, right? So um, it was 1250 per paper. So we don't need to worry to have fact, oh, if I have one page more, two page more, we need to pay more, no, it's not like that. So we can have as much references as needed, but only use the ones that directly support our work. This is very important, okay? And ensure proper also attribution, right? The, for, this is the reference style. I just mentioned that if you if we check carefully, this can be avoid the problem. And the follow for marking conversion for publication and the triple E, for example, here a triple E journals generally follow a citation numbering system. This is we have we have template. We just need to follow the template and the check, double check uh, carefully, double check, uh, triple check uh, our references to make sure uh, it has proper also attribution and it's the correct format and all the numbers are correctly, all the references are correctly listed and we are not, uh, we are not quoting uh, inappropriate uh, references. Then, in summary, now we are going to have some, you know, have a summary how to prepare our marriage script or your marriage script. The first is we can or should start writing before you have all the work done and everything figured out. For me, for myself, I always tell my student, every time when you read a, a, a read a paper, when you read a paper, write something, conclusion. Write one sentence, two sentences. What is the paper about? What is the paper's contribution? And what is the uh, limitation? I always ask them to write three sentences. This is a very good uh, uh, hobby, okay? This is very good because next time when you write papers, you have materials. You don't need to build everything from empathy. You can build something. You can build your paper from something. And this is very good for the introduction to write, okay? And when we write a paper, uh, abstract is very difficult to write, but many, in many cases, uh, people or, or authors are not so careful with it. But the um, people always consider the introduction is the most difficult part to write. So for students and young professionals, I would like to recommend that when you read a manuscript to write, to, to write something ready, at least, for example, three sentences. What is is about? What is contribution, novelty, and what is limitation? Then this would be help, uh, very helpful for your writing in the future. And then, should I start writing? We can start writing at every time when we have something, when we, even we read a paper, but should not submit until, until we have finished, okay? This is, of course, if it is not finished, and most likely it is going to have a direct reject from the editor. Then check the logic, organization, clarity, and reality, and especially the format and the notations. The logic needed to be consistent. And this, these are very important, but what, what also important is the basic things, for example, the, the formulations, notations. And sometimes when we write, with, I found out the manuscript with 
notations, uh, many different notations uh, define the same the, define the same thing, and then and then the same notation is for many different things. This also happens very often. Okay, so it is very important. For this, for this aspect, I always, for example, for my student, I always tell them, okay, you can write a table, table aside to the paper to see, to check the rotation, the formulations, these things, to check it. If you have double, double defined or multiple defined, or you have mixed defined, it's very easy to find out. And also check for Conformance of style with the journal, or you are when you are submitting to that is the formatting, citation section, uh, uh, this is and the language and the grammar, and then the detailed matters. For example, good work presented poorly is often misunderstood and rejected poorly by reviewers. This is about the writing. Although actually has a policy that we should not reject the paper because of the writing, but if the paper is not understandable, then it's another story, okay? If it's too poorly, poorly represented and needed to misunderstanding, then it is possible to be rated poorly by the reviewers. So it is important to present correctly. Finally, the review process is not intended to edit the manuscript and the poor presentation just offended the reviewers. The reviewers is, uh, anyway, the reviewers, we I always say that the reviewers is trying to improve the manuscript, but not to edit the manuscript. This we need to understand. Finally, then after that, we are going to have publication ethics, yeah, ethical and ethics, okay, the publication. After we prepare the manuscript, we can submit our paper. This is the general, typical journal flow, workflow, okay? We submit the manuscript, we have a journal staff. The journal staff think, okay, this is not like a paper. Maybe it's not even a paper. Uh, it's just one page or something. It is, uh, it is not like a paper. So the journal staff can directly reject. They, if the journal articles think it has no formality problem, and the formula problem sent it to the yes, editor-in-chief. The EIC think, okay, it's out of scope. It's rejected. Most likely, okay, it's out of scope. And then if it is, um, it is plot, there is plagiarism. Plagiarism cannot pass cross check, it is rejected. Maybe from the journal staff. Then if it has no problem, then we can, with the EIC passed to the associate editor. The associate editor think, okay, it is technically wrong, then can reject it. It is wrong, technically wrong, okay? Otherwise, the associated editor passed it to reviewers. Uh, uh, now we all have these anonymous, uh, anonymous uh, reviewers. Then the reviewers review it, pass to the, the AE, to the EIC, then to the authors, coming and going back and forth. Finally, the paper. <coughs> reject it or accept it for publication. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, now this process looks very sophisticated, but the first, first round is 36 days, in just us. So thanks to our reviewers and to our uh, associate editors, uh, because of their very hard working, our, um, our authors can have the first uh, decision in five weeks. This is a very, very good number, okay? And we have different working style, and we can try to approach a high quality of statistics. When it is about ethics, then we should be uh, very careful with our manuscript, is because uh, we need it to, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time for the editorial board, the reviewers and the reader, read, readers, and also our own time, your own time. So we need to be very careful with our manuscript because it is, takes a lot of time for everyone. 
So from this viewpoint, we should maintain uh, uh, integrity and the uh, of the publication process. And the scientific integrity and reproducibility is is the basic, the basics, okay, basics of research and of also uh, basics of research. And as I just mentioned, we have a code library. Now we also can publish code. It is highly recommended our authors to share their code and to share their data. This is very important. And this can be also can gain a lot of recognition to our authors. And another thing is the authorship. We should also the some should the, be the one who contributed to the paper, not because of friendship, only because of contribution to be included in the in the manuscript. And the other thing is, and we should understand and avoid and accept the conduct, for example, plagiarism, duplicate submission, non disclosure. Uh, uh, we should know that it is very, very important, very difficult to build uh, recognition and uh, these things, uh, status, and it's very easy to ruin it. So we should cherish what we have and make sure that, and to avoid this unacceptable conduct. So, and for example, the kind of type of misconduct, for example, conflict of interest, fraud debt, manipulation, plagiarism, disclosure, also involvement, contribution. Uh, I think right now, everyone should know this very well, right? One thing we should need to, to know that this, this is a very serious issue. And right now, in, right now, in, uh, right now in, in, in Manuscript Center, we have a cross check. So this can be very easily found out. And we, we normally we have a edit EIC rejection if it is, uh, has problem, okay? And this is also we should maintain our scientific integrity as a, because it is very, very difficult, uh, important. This is a very, very important, okay? And uh, no matter you are student or we are professors, this is very important. In the beginning of our career or research, one may think that, okay, we may, might not pay such a lot of attention on it, but we should know, especially in the beginning of our career and the research, we should know that it is not easy to gain any recognition. And it can be ruined by a, 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 a quick, quickly be ruined by one mistake, for example, plagiarism. So this is ethics is the most important thing uh, for research, for researcher. <laughs> These are the conflict of interest. And I just mentioned plagiarism, duplication, and this thing. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I can share this this presentation with everyone if one is interested. You can send me an email, then I can share share with everyone. Okay. So finally, I'm going to end up our uh, this talk with some. Uh, invitation and recommendation. Uh, welcome or please participate in your community and in our society. Uh, for example, we can, you can, one can volunteer for reviewers. We can initiate supervised uh, mentorship first with advisor, subsequent as independent in in reviewers. We can set up an oral code for your class bunch work club. Resist the inappropriate uh, peer pressure, and uh, anyway, uh, anyway, try to participate in our community and society, and be more involved in our society. This is very important to in the beginning of our uh, in the beginning in the beginning of our career and the research and the, and the for everyone. Okay. Finally, I'm going to give a summary. First, HPE and also GISS. 
as with geoscience and remote sensing, society offers a wide, wide variety of publication options. For example, the GIS Society would have four journals, including uh, additional uh, code library, and we have just us at the open access, and we have magazine, and GIS Gas as commercial, commercial um, publications, and we have conferences, and uh, GIS support a, a lot of conferences, and we have one of the flagship conferences, AGA, uh, among the most prestigious, uh, prestigious in the e, uh, ENCS field. As an author and a scientist, you carry your reputation as well as that of your co-author and your institution. So pay due attention to publication ethics, okay? So thank you very much. Do you have any question? Okay, thank you, Professor Li. And uh, thank you to give us a wonderful and useful lecture. <clears throat> Here we prepare uh, some uh, general and interesting questions from uh, our audience. And I prepare uh, in a word document. Uh, I will share in the document, share uh, my screen and uh, please uh, uh, please uh, select some interesting or give, or, uh, give you answers. Uh, thank you. Could you see my screen? Yeah. Oh yeah, my God. Is... <laughs> thank you very much. It's a lot of questions. Can you, yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. can you, Larger, it a little bit larger, make it a bit larger. Yeah, yeah. And the first two is uh, uh, now is okay. Ah, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, now is uh, uh, is the uh, inviting reviewers how to and uh, to what extent will the editor consider the recommended reviewers as these first two questions. When we, when we uh, okay, thank you very much for this very interesting question. And uh, normally in the beginning, when we choose reviewers, we choose experts from the field. And for example, the ones who publish in the journal, okay? Who publish in the journal. And also who publish, uh, who publish the in related field. Sometimes we also choose a reviewer from the uh, right now we have a pool in the Mary Swifton Center. We have a pool and choose reviewers from the previous reviewers who are who agreed to review Mary Swift. In general, it's like this. Thank you. The next uh, question is uh, what what are the main difference between the okay for you for you yeah, yeah. maybe I simply read the questions and do by myself okay answer by myself. Okay, okay. A point number. And uh, for the second question, to what extent will the editor consider the recommended review when submitting manuscript? Thanks. Uh, depends. For example, we choose normally for, for me, we recommend uh, our a, a associate editor, associate editor to choose one preferred review, maximum one. Uh, sometimes we choose two. But under the under the uh, uh, condition that there are no conflict of interest, for example, they are not from the same uh, institute, and they are they are not they don't have close collaboration relationship. Okay, in this case, we consider really, uh, preferred reviewers, which is okay. For the third question. What are the main difference between the conclusion and the abstract? This is a good question. That, as I just mentioned, as a uh, yeah, as I just mentioned that the abstract is a short, is kind of a short version of is 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 a concise version of the manuscript. But the conclusion is mainly about what you can conduct from the manuscript, okay? They are different. 
they have this different because the conclusion is more about what you can obtain from this work from this research and what is the conclusion and what will be the future research line what is the limitation and what will be the future research but the abstract is what it is your what is your contribution what is your novelty what is your experimental result and what it is possible to apply the abstract is more a concise version of uh, your work so this is the third one the fourth the fourth question when we are rejected from you what the special issue is it okay to resubmit to regular issue yes first is yes it is uh, uh, it is okay to resubmit it to regular issue but needed to see what are the decision what is the decision of the uh, uh, rejection if it is out of scope is out of scope of the journal i think there's no point to resubmit it to the regular issue because it is out of scope but if it's an, uh, it is uh, because of novelty then if the paper is revised uh, have uh, improved with enough novelty it can be resubmitted no matter in what kind of condition when we submit a paper uh, we submit a rejected manuscript to the journal again first it should include the original manuscript id to provide a revised version of the manuscript to include to include to uh, okay i just see see some comment and to include a point to point response later okay this is question 4 question 5 may i ask uh, uh, the the we were rejected the review will give a positive opinion but the, the editor refused how to deal with it in general thanks thank you very much alejandro okay and uh, for this, uh, if it is, uh, it is still is the same. I would like this, I think, is a similar issue to the fourth one, okay? This is to the fourth one. What it is like, if it is rejected uh, by the, ed if the editor give a rejection and it has, for sure, it has a strong reason. For example, it's the royalty, or uh, it is a contribution, whatever. If you would like to resubmit it, it is possible to resubmit it, but the, uh, it is okay if you resubmit it, other than out of scope, okay? If it's out of scope, it is impossible, okay? Other than out of scope, and if it's novelty, if it is improved, the novelty enough, have uh, uh, completed a new method, and to have completed new uh, things, new con novelty, contribution, then it can be resubmit. The important thing is to include the original manuscript ID, to include the revised manuscript, to include a point-to-point -point response later. Okay. So the fourth question, the fifth, are similar. The sixth, dear professor, as a graduate student, would I be rejected if I write a review of Habsburg? No, I think. Thank you. I don't uh, think um, it's going to be rejected. It's in the end, it depends on the quality of the paper. Okay? Depend on the quality of the paper. If the paper, if it, it is too a good do, it does be a good paper, a good review paper, then it's going, the paper is going to be reviewed. The, the paper is going to be reviewed. Hapspectly noise is definitely is inside of the scope, okay? If there is no plagiarism, then, and, uh, it's, and not terribly writing, it's understandable, then it's going to be reviewed, okay? Uh, it's going to be reviewed, and the reviewer will define, the, uh, we are, the reviewer will provide a comment, the rejection or acceptance is dependent on the reviewer, okay? And it's possible to be accepted, 
Of course, it's also possible to be rejected. It's, it's more about with the quality. It's not with, the, uh, with that you are a student or you are not a student. The seventh one, as a person who works in a company, is there any difference pub uh, between publishing paper compared with the scholar? No, there's no difference. As I just mentioned, it's just about the paper quality. We have very good papers come from companies, okay? We have very, very good papers from companies, and then we have very good papers from universities. In the end, it is about the paper itself, okay? It is an anonymous reviewer, and, uh, and uh, uh, it's up to the paper itself, okay? If the paper, I just mentioned as in the, the whole of my talk, we just talk about the paper, okay? We just talk about the paper uh, issues, paper stuffs, elements. And if the paper is good, no matter it's come from company or university, any of our GIS journal, magazine, TGAS, transaction, and uh, GSTAS and GISN are very happy to receive it, okay? <laughs> and the edge, what do we need to be a reviewer of this journal? Mm. One thing is you can, if you, if you have published in this journal and you are lucky, you are also have possibility to be selected as a reviewer. But my recommendation is if you do really would like to be a reviewer, you can write to the associate editors, okay? To the ones who is in your field. The ones you think that the, his field or her field that you can be, uh, you can review, okay? You can review. Then send the uh, AE associate editor in May, telling them, uh, telling him or her that, okay, you would like to review papers for the journal. Then they are, we are going to, they are going to be very happy to receive this kind of email, then send you, ask you for review, okay? And this is first. Second, I would like to recommend if you want to be a reviewer, try to be a reviewer with high quality, okay? In the end, if you are selected and the ones to be selected more often as reviewers, mostly is because of the quality of the reviewer. Because as authors, we would like to have high quality comments, right? So this is the edge, the ninth. How detailed should the proof of why our master solved this problem? Needed to design a controlled experiment or simply explain the possible reason for the successful resolution of the problem? Uh, there are recommended articles in this regard. This is a very good question. And uh, how detailed should the proof be if the, in the end, if when you submit the paper, if the reviewers understand it, if the reviewers think that it's enough, that what you present is enough to solve the problem, okay, that's enough. Uh, this is the typical way. But of course, if you want example, to find the best articles, for example, the, the one, the best reader, the paper, the highly cited paper, and the top papers in your field, and the look at with that papers, then this is the ways to to figure out how much we should do, okay? And of course, it is highly recommended to design a, a, a design controlled experiment and a real experiment. Of course, if we design a controlled experiment for our method, and uh, that would be. Uh, that would be uh, very good. If we can have theoretic proof and we can have uh, empiric proof, both, if we can have both kind, that would be perfect, okay? Uh, simple explain might not be enough. It depends, okay? I'm not sure how simple, uh, how simple it is. But the best way should to have theoretic and uh, empirical proof at the same time, but sometimes it is also difficult, right? So a recommendation is that if you give this to, for example, if you are a student, you explain this to your supervisor, to, to, to your partnership, to your collaborator, they understand it and they think it is understandable. 
And then if the reviewer thinks it's understandable, that would be enough, okay? Please move. Hello? <clears throat> Please move. Move the... Oh, yeah, yeah, number 10. In yeah. some published the work, I have some clo uh, clause, the implement, uh, implication of the findings, reputation of our data and the discussion section. Mm. Is it, is, is it uh, accepted practice? Yes, I think so. We have a general, we have a general suggestion of the paper structure, but it is also flexible according to our own uh, cases, okay? We need to adjust justice a little bit to this part, that part, flexible, flex, uh, make things more flexible, okay? If it is, when you think, it is more fluent or consistent when, I put, when you put it in the discussion section, of course, it's acceptable, okay? That is definitely acceptable. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Yeah, okay, that's, that's all. Thank you, Professor Lee. Thank you for your patient and nice answer. That's too much questions and our student is really interested with your, your lecture and uh, <clears throat> Thank you again for your for your effort to uh, to prepare this uh, lecture and uh, uh, in the uh, almost uh, uh, one and hour uh, lecture and we um, really learn a lot from your uh, lecture. We uh, we have a new understanding about how to prepare a manuscript uh, and from we we got what the editor uh, what the editor and the editor in chief considered when they submit. Submit the the paper. Uh, um, thank you, thank you, thank you again for your wonderful and useful uh, lecture. Thank you, and it's my great honor. Anyone, if you have question, you can send me email. Okay, anyone with a question can send an email. I'm more than happy to uh, send answer. Thank you very uh, much, uh, Professor Lee. Last, the last one, uh, and someone ask, uh, could you please share share your PowerPoint? Uh, no problem, definitely. Please, okay. I will share with you a uh, few, okay? They can ask you or they can send me email and then I'm more than happy to send it, okay? Share it. Yeah, okay, okay. I will, uh, I will, um, when you when you send to me, I will share um, in our uh, WeChat uh, of, uh, official account and then uh, okay. share the actual GIS. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor.